Hey guys, C Drama Invasion here. Welcome back to another top 10 video. We're at the end of the year, and this year we were so blessed with so many new and amazing Korean dramas. I think K dramas really shine this year because we got a lot of um, foreign investment. Lots of um, companies, Prime, Netflix, production companies, and distribution companies were interested in making a lot of new and fun K dramas. So I have around 14 dramas on this list, and that includes two honorable mentions as well. You definitely do not want to miss this one, and it was a very hard to rank them because there were just so many great ones. Let's start off with honorable mentions. First off, I have a business proposal. Now this is a very short and sweet 12 episode drama, arguably the most popular rom-com of the year, and for good reason. It has the typical tropes, however, they do it really well, and for a rom-com, it hits all the notes that you want in a rom-com. Of course, it's not going to be anything new, but um, it was super funny and I was obsessed with the chemistry between the second leads. It just had the perfect balance where one couple was like the funny one and then the other one had like more mature and deep vibes. There was good cis man's laughs and iconic moments, so I had to put it on the list somehow. Next is Blind, and I really loved this drama. It came out of nowhere, and it just brought back classic K-drama thriller vibes. It is basically a story about a court case that has 12 jury on stand, plus you have the main police officers and the judge involved. Um, basically, you go into it not knowing too much, and eventually somebody is targeting these jury members and everyone on the case is in danger and there's just a whole thing that was revealed at the end it was thrilling and satisfying the reason why i put, didn't put big mouse on this even though i enjoyed it was because i wasn't satisfied at the end it felt a little bit rushed here i felt that it, even though they could have had like an extra couple of minutes it was satisfying okay let's get into the top 12 at number 12 is all of us are dead this is that zombie apocalyptic drama that has a bunch of new faces it's set in a high school and although you have to suspend the realism in some places i feel like they did a good job handling the story which like come on we can guess it like okay it's ground zero all hell breaks loose and they're trying to survive the side characters were done so well there's so many of them and they really gave each character a time to shine and yeah, I cared about everyone. The villains were very good. And if they decide to make a season two, I'm excited to see where it goes. It is a refreshing take on the zombie genre that's been redundant. But yeah, South Korea does it so well. So make sure to not miss it. Number 11 is Our Blues with a gigantic, beautiful cast of people. This is kind of an anthology where it follows various um, people, couples, different stories. You have um, a couple of romances, but essentially it follows their various lives, struggles, and it all happens on Jeju Island. So at the end of it, you'll understand and love all the characters. Although there were actions that I didn't agree with with some of these characters, like they held on to a grudge for so, so long, it really made a satisfying moment when they finally worked their way through it. And um, I think I had a lot of favorite couples, but I really like the Shin Mina story. There's themes of mental health, um, teen pregnancy, stigma, first loves, etc. There's a range of cast members, which means um, even if you're older or younger, there's something in here for everybody and each one holds a different message. By the way, I did do a review for all of these in depth, so just Search up the name of the drama you're interested in in uh, my channel search bar and I do both first impressions and monthly reviews so you can watch those videos for more information if you're still contemplating. In 10th place is another drama that took the world by storm. It's 2521 and it really shines in the way that they made fencing such a well-known topic. I thought that they covered it so well for somebody who knew nothing about fencing because they framed it in a way and it's from the perspective of such likable 
um, leading characters. This group of friends were hilarious, driven, and inspirational. The loyalty and the male lead was great here. His protectiveness and encouragement, just letting her do her own thing, rooting for her on the sidelines was great but my favorite part has to be the frenemies um, storyline between the two female leads with Yurim who is her rival fencer. The first um, half I would say is more um, your coming of age story, it's lighthearted, and then later on you get the more realistic problems, issues, and unexpected circumstances. I thought the female lead was so captivating. Nahido is probably one of my favorite female leads um, of the year. Moving on, we have a drama that was truly unexpected for me. It's Crazy Love. I came into this knowing that um, I'll just try it out because I really like the main leads. I love Crystal and I like the male lead too in his previous works and I know that they can do comedy. But this was really off the rails hilarious with some ridiculous moments and during this time when it was airing, I was really stressed out. So it was that perfect drama that I just went along for the ride and it went wild at some points. It was truly just such a blast. Don't take it too seriously and stick to episode 4 because that ending is the one that really got me to continue watching on and it was so worth it. It's a shame that a lot of people dropped this earlier on. I know it was airing when a lot of other dramas that were technically higher caliber was airing, but I had so much fun and would recommend it to everyone. In eighth place is Extraordinary Attorney Wu. This is season one, and I heard the next season will come out in um, two years or so. Personally, I'm not a fan of any law dramas, but because the female lead is just so likable, like watch like two episodes, how can you not love her? Park and Bin was phenomenal here. She played it to the T. Um, it's basically about the first ever autistic attorney in South Korea. I don't think it's based off of a true story, but I read so many comments and reviews of people who are close to someone with autism or work closely with them and they say that her portrayal was true and accurate. With anything on the spectrum, I feel like it's so difficult to portray and make it likable, but I don't think there's even one person that I've seen that said there's any major issues with the characters or the writing of the story. The romance here was just adorable. And I like that we ended up getting to know a lot about the law firm and the various lawyers working there. Number seven is one I recently finished. It's under the Queen's umbrella. The female lead is so good and I've been obsessed with her since Signal. I just know how charismatic and great she is. Do check Signal out. It's not a 2022 drama, but it's literally top 10 K-dramas of all time for me. I will never stop recommending it and that one time travel thriller mystery is just done so well anyways back to under the queen's umbrella because i got sidetracked the female lead of course just nails it her facial expressions the way they zoom in to her like rage despair the crying scenes were so on point i was so emotionally invested in these characters and the main princes they were great i love the little romance storyline it was so adorable and although I thought it was a little bit long, it was very high quality overall. In sixth place is Weak Hero Class. This one really came out of the blue for everyone, I think. It's a Netflix produced drama and it reminds me so much of a younger version of The King of Pigs. Which, spoiler alert, you will definitely see in my top three later on. This drama follows Xian, who is a top male student in his class, even though he appears weak and he's kind of introverted, keeps to himself. All he really knows is to do work and um, that's it. Like he really doesn't have a life study, study, study and repeat. But he becomes quite close to another classmate who is very outgoing, confrontational, and they form an unbreakable bond. This is about bullying. There's lots of violence. It's brutal, but one of the things that I think everybody is drawn to is how well acted it is. The music is 
intense and it works so well with this drama. The storyline is fast paced um, until halfway and then they kind of slow down and go into a different direction. The fight scenes were terrific. Like there were so many action filled fight scenes that is better than a lot of action dramas that I've seen. I will be making a um, full review on this in my um, wrap up video. So it should come out early January. So stay tuned for more details. Number five is Narco Saints, though I could say this could tie for number four as well. It was just so good. Another Netflix drama, only six episodes, has a stellar veteran cast. The trio has been in countless of movies. This was surprisingly like slow burn at some parts because there was so many characters and chess pieces on the chessboard. There was triads and they had to lay down the storyline. But once you get a sense of who everyone is, it really starts picking up near the end. And the final like grand showdown was just beautiful. I love this drama so much and it was so sad that not a lot of people watched this one because it came out at a time where, you know, a lot of that K-drama hype died down. So everyone was like jumping on other dramas and they missed this one because there wasn't a lot of promotion for it either. If it was any other year, this will definitely be like top two, top three dramas. It's just that this year there's just too many great dramas. So I had no choice but to put it in fifth place. But don't get me wrong, literally you can mix this drama list up and I'm pretty sure some people will have like some of my lower ranked dramas even as their number one, but it is personal preference. Next, number four is Pachinko season one. Pachinko is just brilliant. It's based off of a real story and was created by Apple TV, which was so surprising because this is um, one of their only K-dramas, I think. So I'm excited to see what will happen next in season two. But basically this one starts off a little bit confusing. You have two timelines, the past and the present, and a lot of characters. So some of these characters will be from the present and they're like the grandchildren of the female lead. So we basically get to see her from the time she meets um, Lee Min Ho's character and how her world changes until all the hardships that she has experienced throughout her life, poverty, marriage, racism. It was incredible, like the strength and the will of these women back then. And at the end, it was very heartwarming because we got to see an interview, a follow-up of women that experienced this through that time and how they survived. The older actress is a veteran at this and she has received an Oscar award, Yeon Yoon Jung. She's just phenomenal. This was a very powerful and moving story it's a must watch. The only reason why it's not like in top three, but it's super close is because I just want more and that amount of episodes was not enough and now we have to wait. So if they released it like my third place drama, Alchemy of Souls, it would have been great, but I guess they were just trying to experiment with it and see how the crowd's reception was. Anyways, Alchemy of Souls 1 and 2 are in third place. First season, I raved and raved about it. I love So Min. She really has come into her own um, throughout the years. K-drama oldies would have seen her in Playful Kiss and know that that was cringe but iconic. The world here is so beautiful and every single episode is a cinematic masterpiece. The CGI and stuff is so fluid. Like. Just the posters alone will tell you how epic this drama is. There was a good amount of like heart and character building as well as romance, even though it's slow burn. You'll probably be interested the entire time. The episodes do run a little bit longer the first season. And at times I feel like um, you will feel it if you're binge watching it um, all through one day, but I watched it weekly. So do take breaks and watch small chunks. I think you'll enjoy it way more. And after it was over, they announced that there will be a new actress replacing the female lead. The thing is, it does make sense. And this actress did not come out of the blue, so I'm not mad at it like I used to be. I was a little bit wary because I haven't seen her portray anything ever, but she really kills it. And the romance is even better because it's sizzling and 
there's shorter amount of episodes here so the pacing is so on point i've been loving season two and savoring every single second honestly now let's move on to second place my liberation notes if you've been following this channel you know that i really enjoyed this one I would say there's two types of reaction. The first crowd would be like, this was so boring, I don't get it. Um, I get that they're trying to be deep and it was beautiful, but it was like super slow for me. And the second camp of people, which is me, where I just really enjoyed every single second and there was a deeper underlying message to everything. And sometimes there were just moments where there were no words and silence spoke so loud in those moments. Which is why the chemistry is just top notch for me, even though, yes, nothing really happened until a long, long time. The inner conflicts that all the characters went through and how it was set in a urban town. You also have the little storyline at work where it's like all the outcast people who don't really want to interact with everyone else who is basically two-faced and super fake and perky and you're like, no, I'm not feeling this, but it's just done out of respect. There's just little moments like that that were so realistic. I feel like the older you are, the more you will appreciate this, especially if you're someone working. Mr. Goo was so attractive, and I swear everybody fell in love with him after watching the show, even though he's someone that has a lot of issues. And when you have a character that was so hard to get along with and kind of hard to crack that shell, when he falls for the female lead and you see him do the most for her, even like a small gesture coming from him was a lot so i love those moments they were so sweet so yeah if you want to watch this just keep that mindset that there's probably not going to be too much plot going on it is character driven and will be slower and in first place is the king of pigs honestly what more can i say do watch my full detailed analysis of this drama i did a spoilers one and a spoilers free in the wrap-up videos but essentially you have the present storyline where a serial killer is on the loose and he's targeting people from his past. And it all stems back to their childhood. This is violent, heartbreaking, beautiful, sometimes painful and disturbing to watch. Like there were scenes where he was so angry. He painted the walls with red and tortured um, the victims. But after seeing the flashbacks, it's such a morally gray and complex storyline that you really kind of root for the villain but you understand every single character from their perspective and that's all i'll say because you have to experience it for yourself the female lead although some people can argue that she doesn't do anything you know those type of things where they just throw in the female lead for the sake of it um she did end up doing something very important to finding the truth so i liked that everybody was utilized and the writing was so compact and amazing i'm so sad that not a lot of people talk about this drama at all hidden gem of 2022 and going to graduate into the hall of fame in my top k dramas ever if you like weak hero class you will love this drama because it's even crazier and more brutal and sometimes psychologically twisted. And yeah, because of all those themes, it will be hard for me to rewatch it, but I did adore it and I hope you guys watch it. This was a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out my Chinese drama recommendations, top tens, if you haven't seen it already and follow me for more content. Um, I do K-dramas reviews as well as C-dramas, even though we're C-drama invasion. So our weekly news updates will be um, Chinese drama based. But I feel like if you stick around, you'll still have a good time. Let me know your top five rankings of K-dramas in the comments below. And I left a link in the description box below for supporters who want to buy me a coffee. Please leave a message if you do. It's highly appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which will probably come out around New Year's. Happy holidays. Enjoy your time with your family and friends. I wish you all a great holiday.